Look at some of the, the, the ideas here. Superposition. A couple different times I got on here and they basically said that, that objects can appear in multiple positions at the same time. That's a mind bender. Objects can appear in multiple positions at the same time. So that fits perfectly with, with our talk about potentiality, you know. But, but the only way that something appears in a location is when it's observed. It, it, there's some construct or some belief that's narrowing down all the potentiality and saying, no, it's this way. It sounds like the conversation that the Christian and Cecilia were having for three days. No. I, I want to visit my mother and my family over the holidays. No. You see, that's not a possibility. It's not, not going to happen because it's going to go this way. No. You know, it's like a ping pong for three days. Boink, boink. You know, all arguments and discussions where there's a point of disagreement is really, like Shakespeare said, much ado about nothing because, because those two points of view and those two <coughs> positions, you know, that seem to be locked in there and very strong and, and that don't want to give way, that are holding on stubbornly, they're both hallucinations. So you have a hallucination of an argument, but you don't actually have an argument, ever. There's never been an argument, really. There's been a delusion of an argument. So, you know, that's why we kind of had to get into this quantum physics stuff, because everything we've been discussing for three weeks, you know, this really brings it home. That we have fundamental beliefs that have not been questioned, fundamental assumptions, and as long as those assumptions aren't questioned, then it's back to the illusion of conflict. Uh, I believe this. Well, actually, I believe that. I don't know what I believe, I'll throw my two cents in, I believe this. Who cares, really? Who is the one that cares about all these separate belief systems? Okay, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> David. Is it called superposition? Is that what you just call it? Yeah, superposition. No, yeah. the way I look at that, which made it handy for me, was when I dream at night, I close the eyes and I dream, I'm in superposition because I have maybe ten people in my dream seeing different people. However, it's only me, the one, that's in ten different positions. I just seem to be in ten different dream figures. But it's still me, the one, seeing in superposition. <laughs> so it's got to be the same in the, the open eye. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's that's you in, in ten different positions or in six billion different positions. I mean, they actually yeah, have right. photographed objects that you can go on the internet and photograph. These are, these are single wave functions in which you can see what looks like six different things, but it's not. It's one thing and it looks like six. It's like a mind bender. They call it a mind fart. <laughs> you know, because it's... And imagine that that's just the tip of the iceberg, you know. If, if you are perceiving Six billion people will say on planet Earth, and you think that each one has a mind of their own, and each one has their own past history, their own belief system, their own perception of reality, and their own future ambitions, we'll say. That's, those are common constructs with the human being. And then you start to see it from a quantum position, you start to realize it's all the same that there are no differences whatsoever in the cosmos. No differences. That's pretty spectacular. If everything's connected, you know, they took a, an electron out and, and put it one end of the universe and they did something to it and it, the same thing, you know, there's no difference. They're, they're really testing, they're touching the same thing because there's only one thing, so to speak, or one uh, field, we'll say. Yes, sir. I just have a picture to that, like, you know, Stjerneskud, what's that in English? Stjerneskud, this is what you lit on, pardon? The falling star. No, not the falling star, what you use on New Year's Eve. Firework. Oh. Firework, yeah, like, but the small ones. 
There's only one point, but if you yeah. do like that, yeah. it is a circle. But that point, that looks like this point is on all these places at the same time. Yeah. You know? Ah, yes. You know? The old spark there on fire. <laughs> so you still yeah. like, and it looks like a circle. Your eyes are seeing... But there's only one point. The, the circle, right. yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can see, like, this unleashes everything. It's like, you know, when they first split the atom, you know, there was all this power that was generated. They didn't know where it came from, but it was like all this power, and they were describing it in here. Uh, and so you can see that the same kind of thing can happen to your consciousness. If you open up your consciousness and take all the blinders off, then you have this enormous power, this universal kind of consciousness, the power of the mind that's just there, beyond splitting atoms, beyond Nucle nuclear explosions and everything, much, much more powerful than that. <laughs> People see on Earth a nuclear explosion, a mushroom cloud, and they go, whoa. Well, look at the Big Bang <laughs> in context to, to a nuclear explosion on Earth. Put, put it in a larger context. And what they're coming up with now in quantum is that that, that Big Bang that seemed to splinter and, and send off different objects on, throughout the cosmos, is part of the optical delusion too. It brings you to a point is there is no Big Bang and and you can actually cease now from trying to ask those kind of questions uh, like what what caused the Big Bang? Hmm, where would that question come from? Does that question come from the unified field? No. Does the unified field ask why do I exist? How did I get here? What is the meaning of life? Why do I do these pointless actions of, of working jobs and collecting money and spending money and working out all these, these meaningless acts of, of behaviors for what? What is the point? Did you, I really liked the part of the movie where, where he was talking about questions because he said, asking a question about these objects and these particles is like asking, what is the marital status of the number five? That'll stick with you. What is the marital status of the number five? It's not that it's a, like a good question or a bad question. It is completely irrelevant to ask what the marital status of number five is. Now start to apply that to all the questions in your mind that you think are important. <laughs> will I be famous? Will I be rich? Here's what she said to me. Que sera, sera. Whatever will be. All those questions in your mind about what's important in the universe, how did it get there, all those curious questions that come up, you know, in philosophy and science about determin determinism versus free will. All the questions about where are we headed? Where is the planet headed? Will it recover from the, the ozone, the hole in the ozone there? That's an irrelevant question. Irrelevant. Will I get married or will I be single? Absolutely irrelevant to you, unified perception, to the, the field, who, it doesn't even make sense. Who is there to get married? Who is there to get divorced? Who is there to grow old? Who is there to die? Everything, everything that you seem to think and believe about the human condition, about the solar system, about this galaxy, about the cosmos, everything, without exception, that is believed about all these things has absolutely, positively, no existence and no reality whatsoever. And once you start to get a glimmer of that, then you start to get a glimmer of what happiness must be. You start to say, duh, I really don't know what's going on here. <laughs>